Hi, welcome to Anna Prime Recap. You are trapped in a parallel dimension with your own psychopath copy. We continue our tenebrous journey through the tales of the anime Junji Ito collection. Today's video starts with the story called Used Record. Agawa owns a single vinyl record. The melody is capable of awakening feelings and causing goosebumps in anyone. Until one day, she welcomes a girl into her house. After hearing the song, the girl asks Agawa to lend her the record so she can make a copy. Agawa refuses to lend it, claiming that even if the disc is not affected in the recording, making a copy could somehow take the magic out of the song. The girl then asks where Agawa bought the record and she also refuses to say. As the cover was completely white, without any title or credit, it was impossible for the girl to find another record like it. After much insistence, the girl leaves. Agawa looks at the table and notices that the girl took the record with her. So, she decides to run after her and throws a rock at the girl. According to the woman, that vinyl is more important than her life. There is definitely a curse starting here. The girl doesn't want to return the record, so she attacks Agawa with the same rock she hit her with. However, she ends up hitting her head on a wall and dies immediately. The disturbed girl walks through the streets in search of a record player to listen to that weird song again. She arrives at a store and, despite the cover being completely white, the owner recognizes the record in her hands. He claims that record was stolen from his collection. He says that this is a unique copy in Japan and, like Agawa, says that the record is more important than his own life. The girl manages to escape and enters a coffee shop to hide from the man, who is chasing her. There, she spots a strange man sitting with his head down. The girl talks to the clerk and asks if he has a record player in the store. The young man let her use the device and everyone gets emotional with that melancholy song. The weird guy gets up from the table and informs the girl that that song belongs to a famous singer and was recorded after her death. According to him, that was a supernatural song. The girl runs away again to stop the man from taking her vinyl record. While trying to escape from him, she runs into the owner of the store where the record was supposedly stolen from. Now the girl needs to get rid of two stalkers. She passes again through the alley where Agawa is dead. The woman's body was covered by a tarp. The old man thinks this is the runaway girl trying to hide and is surprised to find that it is a dead body. The girl continues to try to escape. She climbs a pile of wood to get to the other side of the wall. When she is about to make it across, she comes across the bizarre man from the cafeteria. The girl gets scared and slips on the logs, dropping the record in front of the guy. He then just takes the vinyl and leaves. On the other side of the wall, the girl is dead, she got crushed between the wooden logs. This was the second victim of the cursed vinyl. All this is a mystery. Nobody knows how that record came about, or why everyone who takes possession of it ends up dead. So, be very careful the next time you hear an addictive creepy song. Now, let's move on to the second tale called, The Hell of the Doll Funeral. Marie is one of dozens of children who gave in to the doll's curse. Her parents see her, more and more, losing her humanity. Until some time later, Marie completely transformed. The girl could no longer move or even smile. In that society, most people get rid of children when they turn into dolls. However, Marie's parents swore they would keep her with them. What they didn't count on is that Marie's change wouldn't stop there. The girl deteriorated more and more until she became a disgusting creature. Her state was so chaotic that she was already creating life again and turning into a bizarre monster. Her parents then decided they needed to get rid of her. And you, what would you do if you were Marie's parents? Is there any way to reverse this diabolical curse? Now let's move on to the third story, called Further Tales of Oshikiri. Oshikiri is a rather peculiar young man. He has no friends and lives alone in a gigantic mansion. One night, he finds Fuji, a girl from school, wandering through the halls of his house, which was certainly very strange. The girl seems to be very scared and asks Oshikiri not to do anything scary to her. The young man doesn't understand why Fuji is at his house at that time of night and, mainly, acting like that. Oshikiri asks what's going on, but the girl runs away and, out of nowhere, disappears. The next morning, during class, the young man sees the girl talking normally with her friends. At that moment, he realizes that this was not the same girl he found at his house the night before. The girl who was wandering the halls was another Fuji, who belonged to a parallel universe. She then notices that Oshikiri was looking at her and goes to him to ask if something happened. The young man denies that he had his eye on her, even though she doesn't believe her classmate, she leaves. Seconds later, Aoyama appears and starts mocking Oshikiri, saying that he is too short for Fuji. Oshikiri asks Aoyama to leave him alone, but the young man continues his teasing. Then he gets stressed and goes up against his friend, who hits back by punching the young man in the face. At that moment, Fuji appears and separates the two. Back in his room, during the night, 
Oshikiri hears a familiar voice calling out to him. Aoyama was on his doorstep and apparently very angry. The young man opens the door to his room and finds a bizarre monster. Aoyama was looking grotesque and goes to kill him, but when he goes to attack the young man, his whole body melts like a candle. Oshikiri was disturbed by all that, and even more on the next day, when he saw that Aoyama was present in the class. That day, Fuji accompanied him to his house. She was determined to get to know the mysterious mansion where Oshikiri lived. The young man spent the entire time trying to convince Fuji to give up the idea of going to the mansion. He told her that place served as a portal, where people transited between multiple parallel dimensions. He also says that he once saw a guy just like him walking through the halls. Fuji didn't believe that story and kept insisting on visiting Oshikiri's house. So the two enter the mansion together, but the young man asks his friend to be very careful. Looking back, Fuji had already disappeared. Three days went by and the girl didn't show up at school anymore, she had already been reported missing. Oshikiri imagines that the moment Fuji entered the mansion's gates, she was transported to another world. The young man hears a strange movement and goes to check what is happening. When he leaves the room, he comes across a disgusting monster. That thing asked Oshikiri to make her go back to normal. The young man recognizes the monster's voice and realizes that it is Fuji. Then the freak starts to increase in size and her entire body melts away, just like Aoyama did. The young man wonders if that was the Fuji of his world or the Fuji that belonged to a parallel dimension. Walking through the halls, he is also transported to another universe, where he finds Fuji tied up in a chair and his psychopathic clone is about to do some sort of experiment on her. The young man then discovers that his other version is responsible for turning those people into diabolical monsters. He had already run tests on Aoyama and Fuji from the parallel reality and now intended to carry out his experiments on the other girl, who was missing. When the evil copy was about to inject the fluid of death into Fuji, Oshikiri appeared and knocked him down. His copy tries to hit him with the needle, but he pushes him away again and manages to get the syringe out of that monster's hand. Oshikiri injects the liquid into his bizarre clone's neck and what happens next is a disturbing scene. His skeleton starts to grow and his skin is completely torn apart. Before dying, the monster informs Oshikiri that he will never be safe, as there are several alternative dimensions and therefore several killer clones out there. The giant skeleton dissolves and now the next challenge Oshikiri and Fuji will have to face is to get out of that scary place. As they stand watching that terrible scene, a new character approaches from behind them. Will they be able to escape this parallel dimension alive? So what did you think of this anime? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more anime recaps. See you next time.